Hello everyone, welcome to our lecture video. In, in this lecture video, we are going to uh, design a rectangular beam to uh, resist a bending moment equal to 75 kN using M25 mix and uh, FE415 grid steel. So, under our playlist of RCC video, we, we are going to complete the design of beams and obstacles and much more uh, videos. So, do follow the playlist in the whose link is provided in the comment below so right now what we are going to do is we are going to design a beam and we are going to design a rectangular beam which has to resist a bending moment equal to 75 kN meter uh, while using M25 mix and ME415 grid steel so before beginning this question what we basically need for uh, composition of this question is we need our uh, code we need, uh, we need our uh, we need our IS uh, uh, we, so right now we are going to follow our Indian standard code we will be following our IS 456 uh, 456 uh, and 2000 456.2000 code so you need to at least have the PDF of this uh, PDF of this uh, code or you can have the hard copy of this uh, uh, code so right now we are going to solve this uh, problem now so first and first and foremost what we are going to do is uh, so while designing our rectangle beam what we are going to find out is we are going to uh, so let me just draw the figure so we are going to find out our B, which is going to be our breadth of the beam we're going to find our overall depth which is going to be D and we're going to find our uh, area of uh, area of our area of our steel this is going to be our area of steel so we're going to find the number of bars the diameter of bars uh, which we are going to use and so this is going to be our um, uh, effective depth and it's going to be effective depth is till the center uh, center of this center of this reinforcement and this is going to be my clear cover which is going to be denoted by d dash so we are going to find out all these values uh, va values in order to design a rectangular beam so first and foremost what we are going to do is we are going to uh, we are going to assume certain things we are going to assume we are going to assume the ratio of d by b as 1.5 to 3.0 so what we can uh, do is we can assume small d by b we can uh, either assume the overall depth the this capital D is my overall depth from top of the beam to bottom of the beam or what I can assume is my small d which is going to be my effective, uh, effective depth divided by breadth of the beam as the ratio of 1.5 to uh, 3.0 and now we are going to assume one more thing we are going to assume the length of the beam divided by the effective depth d is equal to is in it's going to be in the range of 10 to 16 so we are not going to be using this uh, for this question but uh, for your understanding I have written this uh, over here so next what we are going to do is we are going to assume so uh, we can assume uh, either the effective depth or the overall uh, overall depth so right now what I am going to do is I am going to take effective depth as d by b well I am going to take the ratio of effective depth to the breadth of the beam as 1.5 we can take n value between 1.5 to 1.3 then I am going to write one more line b equals to d divided by 1.5 so if we are clear over here next what we are going to do is we are going to uh so right now uh, we have to design a rectangular beam in order to resist a bending moment of 75 kilonewton meter so right now we are going to design the rectangular beam by using our limit state method so uh limit state method and basically under a limit state method what we do is so we are going to so let me just write down under limit state method we are going to increase the load we are going to increase the load while we are going to uh, while for the resistance we decrease the resistance so right now we are going to design our beam by using the limit state method under the limit state method so right now for this question uh, for this question this is our unfactored bending moment uh, so in our question there is no use of the word factored bending uh, factored uh, bending moment or ultimate uh, bending moment so we need to calculate our factored bending moment or our ultimate bending moment so our factored or we can write as your ultimate bending moment so following our code we need to increase our bending moment by 1.5 1.5 into 75 1.5 into 75 so our uh, factored bending moment or, or our ultimate bending moment is 112 point, uh, 1, 112 point 5 kilonewton meter so uh, uh, so under uh, our limit state method we design our beam for factored or uh, factored or ultimate bending moment and and in our question we have been given the unfactored or the service or the working bending moment so if so, so in your question if you are given uh, the words like unfactored service 
or working bending moment we need to multiply that bending moment by 1.5 to obtain our factored or ultimate bending moment and for uh, the factored or ultimate uh, bending moment we design our beam so moving on further what we do is um, First and foremost, we are going to calculate the value of our uh, uh, we are going to calculate the value of our effective depth. So in order to calculate the value of our effective depth, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, design our beam uh, basically for balance section. So for our balance section, we are going to uh, for now for calculation of D, which is our effective depth for calculation of uh, for calculation of D, we are going to use our simple formula. We have uh, we are going to design our beam for the limit state method so we're going to mu limit equals to mu so what does basically this means is we are designing our beam for, for our balanced section so we have three uh, three sections under reinforce over reinforce and balance section. we never design our uh, beam for over reinforced con condition we either design our beam for under reinforced or balanced condition so right now we are designing our beam for balance condition or balance section so uh, so what you need to do is you need to open your uh, is code as i mentioned before so you need to uh, turn on the almost the last space and as you can see under our nxg clause uh, 38 point uh, 38.1 what we have is we have our right over here if the value of you can see uh, as if, if you can see over here if the value of uh, x u by d is less than uh, limiting value then we have our formula of mu as uh, 0 0.87 fy ast as highlighted over here similarly for our uh, balance condition uh, if the value of x u by d is equal to limiting value then we have our value of mu limiting as this so this is our, so this is our moment bending moment formula for under reinforced section while this is this is my uh, formula for balance section so right now we are designing for balance section we are going to use this formula so we need to uh, so code is a must in, or, in order to design our in, in order in order to do such numericals so we have our limiting formula over here as 0.36 x u max d 1 minus 0.42 x u max d uh, b d square f c k so we're going to use this formula so let me uh, rob this portion and uh, so let me start from the start over here so we have mu limiting mu limiting equals to mu limiting equals to mu so we already have our value of mu on the right uh, so we have our value of mu as 112.5 kilonewton meter into 10 to the power 6 meter into 10 to the power 6 newton meter so let me not try that uh, so let me now for my left hand section i'm going to use my formula uh, this long formula which i just uh, showed you before of 0. Point, uh, this formula of 0. 0.36 uh, x u max by d 1 minus 0 0.42 for our balance section we're going to use this formula so let me write that uh, formula which is as uh, 0 0.36 f c k uh, 0 0.36 f c k uh, b x u max b x u max d minus 0 0.0.42 uh, x u comma max uh, this is equal to this value of 112.5 uh, into 10 to the power 6 so what we need uh, next is we need the value of uh, x u max uh, over here uh, in order to find the value of b so let me just write down over here we have 0 0.36 so what is fck fck is my characteristics compressive strain and we have already given in our question we, we are designing our beam for f25 uh, f m25 mix so our fck is going to be uh, 25 uh, 25 newton per uh, 25 newton per mm square while uh, my fy is going to be 415 newton per m uh, uh, while we have uh, fy as well over here fck fy while the value of my f the value of my fck is f25 or we are going to need fy as well in our later uh, so let me just write down over here small in here fck is equal to 25 while fy equals to uh, 415 this is both are in newton per meter square is also in newton per millimeter square so what is fck fck is my characteristics compressive strength while my fy is the tensile strength of my uh, tensile strength of my steel so we're going to use both of these values later on so right now i am going to use first the value of fck so fck is going to be 25 
into b so right now i'm going to calculate uh, d so i can uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to write uh, my uh, b in terms of d my b in terms of d is d divided by 1.5 d divided by 1.5 next i'm going to need the value of x u max so what is the value of x u max we're, we're again going to follow our we're again going to follow our code so if you turn to page number 70 of of the same code what we can see is the value of x u by d is given is given over here for so for our fy of 415 uh, fy of 415 we have the value of x u max by d as 0 0.48 so you need to turn, turn on to page 70 of your code so we have the value of uh, x u max uh, equals to 0 0.48 d so we uh, so for such small values you can remember them as well or else you can turn on your code as well so we have next d minus 0 0.42 again the value of x u max is going to be 0 0.48 d equals to 112.5 into 10 to the power 6 so it's, it's so it's quite a long equation so if i uh, go on solving this i'm going to get this as 2.3 d cube equals to 112.5 into the power 6 on solving this i'm going to get the value of my d which is going to be my effective death small d i get the value of my small uh, d as 365.7 mm so hopefully you have understood uh, till over here so if you have copied it you can copy it or you can take the screenshot uh, you can take the screenshot of, of all these uh, values uh, of of this portion because i'm going to drop and we're going to move on to next part so till now what we did was we, we did find the value of our effective depth uh, effective depth uh, d as 365.7 mm so again drawing our figure so there are going to be our re reinforcements over here so i'm just uh, randomly assuming the number of reinforcements as three there are no losing this is, this is a random figure so what we found this as this is going to be my d so what i need now is i know i'm going to need my overall depth d and what i need next is my clear cover so clear cover is basically the distance uh, left uh, between the reinforcement and the beam this uh, this distance this is going to be my clear cover so what we basically do is we assume a clear co cover of minimum of 25 mm so we basically assume the minimum of 25 mm for beam this is the minimum value so right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to assume the value of 35 mm you can assume any value higher than 25 mm so right now i'm assuming assume assume effective cover of so right now i'm assuming effective cover of 35 mm 35 mm then my overall depth d is going to be equal to 365.7 mm plus this effective cover this uh, distance is going to be uh, this clear uh, this effective cover so right now i'm uh, assuming this effective cover of uh, 35 mm so i'm going to get uh, get this value as uh, so i'm assuming this effective cover up to here up to the center of the uh, center of the rod as uh, 35 mm so i'm going to get the value as uh, this value as 400 mm so now i have found my value of uh, d as well so after finding out the value of uh, d uh, i can find my value of b as well so as we uh, assumed before the value we assume the ratio of d by b as 1.5 so i have already found the value of d so my value of b is going to be d divided by 1.5 d divided by 1.5 is going to be 365.7 divided by 1.5 365.7 divided by uh, 1.5 and it's going to be equal to 243.8 mm and we are going to assume this to be nearly equal to uh, 250 mm so right now i found my this b as well so my value of b is 250 mm while my value of uh, d is going to be 400 mm so right now my size of the beam is my size of beam equals to 250 mm breadth into my uh, total depth my total uh, my total depth d is going to be equal to 400 mm so now my uh, size uh, my design of the beam is completed till this part so what do you do, what do you need to do next is we need to uh, check whether my uh, this design is correct or not so we cannot leave our uh, design saying oh, this is correct uh, right now we don't need to check anymore so in order to check whether my uh, whether my design is correct or not we need to find out the area of tensile reinforcement 
So next what we're going to do is we're going to find out our area of tensile re reinforcement or we're going to find out our area of rebar as well. So, so hopefully you have a clear over here. You can copy this or you can take a screenshot. Now we're going to move to our next part. So now we have already found out our value of B and D. Our value of B is uh, 250 mm while our value of uh, D is uh, 400 mm. So what we're going to do next is we are going to find out the area of our tensile uh, reinforcement. Area of tensile reinforcement. So we write down over here. Area of tensile reinforcement. area of tensile reinforcement so what are going to do right now is we're going to find out our uh, number uh, number and uh, diameter of our rods uh, for which we're going to find out the area of tensile reinforcement so right now uh, as i explained before we have we are designing our beam for balanced section for balanced section so what we read uh, what we need right now is ast which is my area of steel area of steel or area of tensile reinforcement so again following our code so again uh, if you move to annex g the previous part of our uh, previous part of our code so what you can find over here is we are going to find the value of yaxu so we have our value of yaxu as 0.87 fy ast divided 0.36 uh, fck bd so if you can see over here so this highlighted portion of a section we are going to use this formula of annex g in order to find our area of steel so we have yaxu equals to 0. Uh, sorry xu xu max equals to 0 0.87 uh, 0 0.87 fy ast divided by 0 0.36 fck b so we have our value of xu max as uh, xu max is 0 0.48 d so right now what i need is ast so let me write ast on left hand side we get this as 0, F, uh, 0 0.36 fck b into xu max divided by 0.87 fy so we have 0 0.36 so as i mentioned in the question before fck is my characteristics compressive strength so right now we are designing for m25 mix so fck is going to be 25 while my value of b is 250 while my um, value of xu max is 0 0.48 into d 0 0.48 into d and uh, right now i have calculated my small uh, d which is my effective depth as 365.7 so this is my small d is 365.7 mm so uh, in the value of uh, xu max is 0.48 d as i explained before for the value of uh, fy of uh, fy of 415 we have the value of xu max as 0.48 d just following our code so you can turn on to your code page number 70 and see that xu max is 0.48 d we have by value of d as 365.7 divided by 0.87 into fy is my 415 it is my 415 as explained before so fck is characteristic uh, characteristic compressive strength while fy is my tensile strength of my steel which whose value is 415 so on solving this i'm going to get my value of ast as 1094 mm square so i need to uh, check whether my design is correct or not so in order to check that what i'm going to do is i'm going to follow one more code firstly what we're going to do is i'm going to calculate the minimum area of steel required minimum area of steel required so again following our code our code has already given uh, us the uh, minimum requirement for for our steel so what we need to do is we need to go into page number 47 so if you move on to page number 47 of the same code book uh, in page number 47 what you can see here is in this highlighted section you have you have uh, we have as divided by bd equals to 0 0.85 divided by fy where as is the my minimum area of tension uh, reinforcement so we're going to use this formula as divided by es is area of steel or the minimum area of steel required bd equals to 0 0.85 divided by fy so we have as equals to 0 0.85 into bd so we have b as 250 and d as 365.7 divided by fy is 415 on solving this we are going to get the value of minimum area still required as 187 millimeter square so 187 millimeter square so as you can see the area of steel we calculated was 1095 1094 and 1094 is definitely greater than 187 uh, 
minute square so our uh, design beam is correct or it is okay so we can move further so finally after all this design being completed we need to uh, at last we need to find out our uh, diameter and number of reinforcement di diameter and number of bars which we are going to use and in, in order to calculate the diameter and number of bars we are going to we are going to it's just going to be complete a uh, hit and trial so let me show how it is done so now after all the calculation being completed and all the checks being completed what we are going to do is at, at last we are going to calculate our diameter and uh, diameter and number of bars so in order to calculate the diameter and number of bars, it is going to be complete hit and trial process. So diameter and number of bars. This is going to be a complete hit and trial process. So what we're going to do is we have our area. We have already found out our area as area of steel reinforcement as 1094 meter a millimeter square. So we need to design in such a way that uh, the area of uh, the area uh, of the bars we have created uh, matches this criteria it can be a little bit greater if it is perfectly matched it is perfect but it can be uh, greater than uh, this area so we can uh, design for something like 1100 uh, 1150 so on or we can design for little, little less as well as like 1050 1060 1080 so on so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a complete uh, uh, hit and trial so let's see if i took 25 mm bars 25 mm bars and if i provide a uh, three number of it numbers three so my area uh, numbers three uh, so my area of steel at this case is going to be three into pi d square by four so what you can do is we can memorize the uh, memorize the area of steel for different bars as well so let me ri write it down over here so for our different bars we have our uh, different uh, diameters like for our 8 mm uh, 8 mm bars the diameter is uh, the area is 50 mm square similarly for our uh, 10 mm bars the area is 78.5 similarly for uh, 12 mm bars it is 113 uh, for 16 it is 201 for uh, 20 it is 314 and for 25 it is 491 so we can simply calculate uh, uh, this by putting pi d square by 4 where you can put the value of d as 8, 10, 12, 16 respectively and you are going to get this uh, value or you can simply uh, memorize them as well. So right now we are using 25 mm bars and we are going to get the area as 3 into for 25 mm it is 491 and on solving this we are going to get your area of steel as uh, uh, area is still as 1400 mm square so it is quite more than our required design of 1094 so we are, we are not going to use uh, 25 uh, 325 mm bars what if we use 225 mm bars so as i explained before it, it, this, this process is completely hit and trial so let's say if we use 225 mm bars 225 mm so if we use 225 mm bars 2 into 25 we get the area as 2 into 25 is 491 its area 2 into 491 so it's not going to be enough so what we're going to do is we're going to use one more bar of so 2 into 491 uh, is going to be uh, something around 900 or 1000 which is going to be less than 1094 so if we uh, use one more bar of 12 mm of 13 mm so if we put 12 into sorry if we put one two uh, 225 mm bars and one bar of 12 mm one bar of 12 mm so what are we going to get is the area as 1 into 113 so if we calculate this we are going to get the exact area as 1094 mm square so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, uh, which is going which is equal to our area of steel uh, required so what we are going to basically do is we are going to provide diameter of bar provide diameter of bar 25 mm and 12 mm and we're going to provide the number as two numbers and one number two number of 25 mm bar and one number of 12 mm bar so the 12 mm bar is going to be in center and 25 mm bar are going to be at side so let's draw it roughly this is going to be 2 into 25 mm bars and one bar is going to be of uh, 12 mm so you can do the hidden trial process so the main objective which what we're going to do is we're we are going to need create symmetrical uh, reinforcements as much as possible symmetrical reinforcements as much as possible and we're going to uh, create the we're going to provide the diameter of bars in a such a number that it is not uh, in a, a more high or more less than the number of uh, than the area of bar required so we have 
in this case we have perfectly found 1094 as our area but we can design our beam for anywhere within range of 1100 or 1050 or up to uh, up to 1120 etc it cannot be much high as 1400 so in this way we can complete our design of beam we have found out our breadth we have found out our uh, overall depth effective depth and we have found out our uh, required reinforcement as well so in this way our design of beam is completed if you liked our video do subscribe our channel like the video and if you have any queries comment down below and check the playlist for full rcc designs